Hey everyone, Adam Shaw here from Bravura Media Company. Today we've got another vintage map for you guys. It is a map of Vancouver, Canada that was originally produced in 1898. As you can see, it is a bird's eye perspective map in that we get a three-dimensional perspective of the city. We get to see building architecture, we get to see various industries, we get to see ships in the harbor, we can see changes in elevation. This map is very, very detailed. We're going to zoom in and kind of explore and examine this map, but before we do, let's kind of give a brief historical background to the city itself. Vancouver, as you might know, is a coastal seaport city in Canada located in the lower mainland region of British Columbia. If we go back in time and look at archaeological records, we can see that Aboriginal people inhabited the area from about 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. Over time, indigenous tribes were formed, such as the Squamish, Muskiam, and the Tisil Walhuth. Uh, these tribes had villages in various parts of present-day Vancouver, such as Stanley Park, False Creek, Kitslano, Point Grey, and near the mouth of the Fraser River. Europeans became acquainted with the area of Vancouver when Jose Maria Navarez of Spain explored the coast of present-day Point Grey in parts of the Buren Inlet in 1791. Although some are now disputing that the area was discovered by Francis Drake about 200 years earlier in the 1579 time frame. As, as, for, as for the naming of the city, Vancouver is named after George Vancouver, an English officer of the Royal Navy who explored the inner harbor of the Buren Inlet in 1792. It wasn't until the early 1800s that explorer and Northwest Company trader Simon Fraser and his crew became the first known Europeans to set foot on the site uh, of the present day city. It seems that this group traveled from the east down the Fraser River, possibly all the way down to Points Grey. From the early to mid 1800s, the Vancouver area saw the rise of economic demand ranging from gold prospecting to logging. The Fraser Gold Rush brought in about 25,000 men, mainly from California, to the uh, Fraser Canyon, and they bypassed Vancouver in the process, the Vancouver area. It hadn't developed yet, the Vancouver area. The first sawmills in Vancouver showed up in the 1863 time frame, eventually leading to a sprawl of other mills, including ha Hastings Mill, which became the nucleus around which Vancouver formed. The city of Vancouver was officially incorporated on April 6, 1886, the same year the first transcontinental train arrived. William Van Horn, a Canadian Pacific Railway president, arrived in Port Moody to establish the railway terminus and gave the city's name in honor of George Vancouver. Vancouver's population rapidly grew uh, to the railway's presence. The population went from 1,000 people in 1881 to over 20,000 by the turn of the century. Then it grew even more exponentially to 100,000 people by 1911. So, I mean, just look at this growth. From 1881, 20,000 people, and then to 1911 to 100,000 people. It grew five times in about, it looks like, 20 to 30 years. The economy of Vancouver after its incorporation was dominated by large companies such as Canadian Pacific Railway, which fueled economic activity and led to the rapid development of the new city. While some manufacturing did develop, including the British Columbia Sugar Refinery, natural resources became the basis for Vancouver's economy. The resource sector was initially based on logging and then later on exports moving through the seaport where commercial traffic constituted the largest economic factor in, Van in Vancouver by the 1930s. So the port really, really fueled a lot of the growth along with the railway. I mean, it was just these two factors that led to the growth and economic uh, activity. So we'll go into this map. We've got this map right here, uh, 1898 map. We can see down here, city of Vancouver, 1898. We've got labeled locations on this map. The, the resolution isn't great on this map, so maybe we'll be able to pick out a couple of these numbered locations. Uh, 
as you can see, that's either a 27 or a 37. The number is written so small that it's really hard to tell. That looks like a 59. Let's look up 59. It's a hotel, Waverly Hotel. Right here, right on Cordova Street. So it's a little bit hard to decipher some of the locations. That looks like 143 or 145. It's by a railroad depot. That looks like a 102. Let's make sure that these numbers, uh, my eyesight's a little bit off. Let's look at 102. I'm pretty sure that's a railroad depot. Uh, Royal City Planning and Sawmills. Oh, I might be wrong. Maybe that's 101. Canadian Pacific Railroad Company Freight Sheds. That would make more sense to me. It's hard to tell because that number is so small and the resolution isn't great. It's pretty good on this map, but the numbers are written so small. 103 is right here. That looks like a factory or processing plant. Let's see what 103 is. Yeah, that's a cement works. That's a cement works right over by a log uh, a logging company, a, a sawmill company, uh, right across from it. We can see when we talked about logging and how predominant it was in their economy. I mean, one, two, there's one over here, three. I'm pretty sure that looks like a, a sawmill logging plant right here because we see their fenced in waterway. We can see that they did the logging, they held it in the water over the Upper False Creek's flats. Oh, sorry about that. We can also see the ships as well detailed. Over here by the Burr and Knitlet. We, we even get ship. Wow. We actually get labeled ships on this. That looks like 118, 119. HM ship Imperius flagship. And 119 HM ship Amphion. Amphion. So we got ship numbers on. That's fascinating that that is labeled on here. What's this little dock right here? 140. Burren Inlet, it's a rowing club. So there's a rowing club right here, labeled very close to Seton Street. Man, these maps are just fascinating. How much detail that and information. Oh, remember we talked about logging? Another logging plant right over here. Ships and Harbor probably picking up uh, logs and, and whatnot. Here's five. What's five? It is not labeled five did not get labeled what the heck right there that's a shame but i mean certainly we get a perspective of what vancouver was like in 1898 its growth we can obviously see the building architecture in downtown uh right on cordova street and we can see just how built up it was even on the outskirts we can see a lot of residential areas off off in this distance i wish this map was a little bit higher resolution i'm sorry and i apologize for that oh there's another sawmill right over here i mean such an important factor in in its economy and we also talked about the gold rush the gold rush had an impact on this city as well a lot of uh the fraser fraser group really bypassed the city and and went to the canyon to to go mining but logging really really took over as we can see so pretty cool map i'll show you another map of vancouver this one is a 1920 map this is an overhead map it's kind of dis displaying land locations it's uh, we can see different parks labeled exhibition grounds exhibition buildings we can see railways that's another thing about the uh bird's eye perspective map we get a perspective of the rail depots which is always good they're always very uh specific on how everything looks how these railways come out notice a lot of the mills and the factories i mean located right next to the railways very common practice you know to transport goods very quickly and a lot of these railways, you know, converge down to the seaport. As we said before, the seaport was very, very valuable. Let's go back to this map. See, we can see the, the rail lines as well. 
and uh, how they how they come down right here. This map, we see the rail see the railways right here. And they come down. These are dock rail yards as well, coming down right by the docks. What's pretty cool about we get to see shipping lines right here. Harbor shipping to Indian River Waypoint. Very cool. And we've also got a distance. So we can see 2, 2M, two 1.5, one, and a half, one half mile. I'm guessing it's in miles and not, yeah, it's in miles. It couldn't be meters. Um, we even see a, this looks like a rail, this is a railway that goes across. It might be proposed bridge or dam. Oh, this, okay. This was a proposed bridge or dam right here by the Berlin Bitlet. See this? Pretty cool. Taylor's Landing. We got just loaded with information. Various lakes. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. If you like vintage maps and you like history, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. We do videos like these all the time where we explore old maps, look at history. Uh, we even like to have fun. We did a St. Patrick's Day vi uh, video series. Uh, I got to drink some Guinness. We talked about the history of Guinness. We talked about the history of leprechauns. We, we go all over the place with history. So if you like that sort of thing, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, like this video. You leave a comment below if you have any questions about Vancouver, the history of Vancouver. You'd like to leave a comment. Uh, like this video, share this video, and I will see you guys soon. Okay, take care. All right, bye.